This right now is pretty much everything. And it is sick and it is exactly what I wanted. What's up guys, it's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel. Excuse my uh, terrible hair. I have not been able to get a haircut recently because of uh, coronavirus. Behind me here, we have a project today. We have a build and you guys love projects and you love build. And as the title says, we're gonna be building the ultimate DJ reception multi-use rack in that right there, an 18U rolling flight case from Pro X. So we're gonna be building out this giant 18U flight case uh, from Pro X with a ton of gear. It's gonna be complete overkill, but that, that's what I'm known for, complete overkill. It's gonna have its own dedicated audio mixer, it's gonna have a drive rack, it's gonna have DMX built into it so we can run DMX out of this rack, and it's gonna be able to either work with my big giant turntable booth, which is the main use for this, the main use will be for the big giant turntable booth, but it'll also work for my uh, bun booth with the SZ, and it'll work with any other controller. If I need to use this for a production event, and there's another DJ there that has CDJs, they'll be able to tie right into this rack, and we'll be able to run our PA like normal. So, let me show you what all we're gonna be putting into this, and then I'll explain how we're gonna do it. Now let me walk you through all the gear we're gonna be using, and then we're just gonna jump on right into it. I'm, I'm really not gonna explain how this is all gonna go together. I'm kinda gonna watch it, and then at the end, I'll explain how it all works. But the vision's in my head, and I know what the heck I'm doing for the most part. I do want a preference. I may be missing some stuff that I will use, but I will link everything that I'm using in this whole entire build in case you want to do it yourself in the description down below. So starting off with the gear we're gonna be using, we have the 18U rolling flight case. This is from Pro X, of course. That is what all of my cases are Pro X. So we have an 18U flight case. That's gonna be the main thing. This is it. So now let's look at all the gear that's gonna be going into it. First piece of gear here, we have a sliding drawer. And on top of that drawer, we're gonna be putting this Yamaha MG12 mixer. I'm probably going to upgrade this to the MG12 effects so that way we have reverb and some more features that we can use with this being a very versatile rack. I want to have the mixer that has the effects as well as the USB capabilities. But for now, we have the MG12. That's the mixer I have and that's the mixer we're going to be putting into this rack. Next, I have the bulk of the rack portion stuff that we're going to be installing right here. We have one Audio Technica 3000 4th gen. This is going to be a handheld microphone. After that, we have our furnace power conditioner this is the m8dx it's going to be where all of our power is going to go in and also this is the one that has the pull out lights that light up everything below it uh, very handy to have in the rack below that we have the chave show express plus box the rack mount one that you guys have seen me use in the past uh, we're going to be installing this permanently into the rack and then below it we have my favorite piece of tech the dbx drive rack pa2 up here we got some cabling for our mics we have the power adapter but then we also have these uh, mic antenna relocators. So we're gonna use these cables right here to relocate our antennas so that they're not deep in the rack. We're actually gonna mount them up here on the backside up top so that they're nice up as high as we can get them and they can get the best signal possible in the room. To mount them, I have a blank plate here. We're gonna be drilling holes in this plate to fit our antenna relocators and we're gonna mount that on the top on the backside of the rack. Moving along, I have this blank cutout form that we're gonna be using to mount a bunch of ports and connectors that are going to be used in this drive rack. We're actually going to be mounting it at the back of the drive rack on the bottom so that way we can directly go out to all the variety of speakers and tops and stuff that we're going to be using. And when it comes to those ports, instead of making them this time, I actually just have my friends over at NLFX. I, I purchased a bunch of these uh, ports already made, so I got a power con to Edison. I have a bunch of XLRs, both female and male, um, that we're going to be using for a variety of different stuff, mostly for the drive rack so that we have all three of our outputs, both left and right. Next, I have a bunch of these little jumpers right here. These are great to use with the Furman Power Strip when you have big bulky connectors like this. You can use this little jumper right here 
plug it in and get that big bulky thing away from this so it doesn't overlap with another one of the ports. Moving back on top of the rack here, I have a Netgear wireless router. This is going to be used for the DriveRack PA2. I got an Ethernet cable so that we can hook that all up and get that good to go. Right here I have the USB connector and a donor wireless DMX. This is going to be put on the back of the Chavez Show Express box. That way we have wireless DMX ready to go uh, with the USB in a position where all you have to do is just grab the USB, plug in your laptop, and you're good to go. Um, so we're going to be basically building in wireless DMX at the ready into this rack. Then lastly here I have this giant and uh, this shelf is going to go at the very bottom of the rack. Basically is going to be a storage area. You'll see that when this all comes together. And uh, lastly, got some wire ties right here to tidy up our cable management. All right, before I get started, I kind of want to clarify what this is because I know a lot of people might not know what a true rack is. Now, this is a full-size 18U rack. U stands for how many spaces they are. A standard one of those, that is a 1U space to fit in there. Uh, something like this drawer over here, this is a 2U space. It's twice the space. And 1U on this rack is equivalent to three holes. So um, every three holes is 1U. So if I hold this up to it right here, as you guys can see, these three holes right here make up 1U. And then there's three more above it that make up a uh, another U. And with this being a full-size rack, you have the holes on both sides which means you could technically mount gear on both sides of this, or you can use something like this drawer or the shelf that I have laying around here that it can go the full width. And these actually slide out so that we can extend it out to be the full width. So it allows for a lot of creativity, and uh, that's kind of what I'm going to be playing around with here and just putting stuff in here however I see fit and uh, making it the best rack that I can possibly make. So I'm going to put you guys back on time lapse and let's, uh, let's get into it. Alright, so the main piece de resistance is in, and that is the sliding drawer with the Yamaha 12 channel mixer. Pretty sick, pretty dope. And I had to leave enough clearance up here so that obviously I can fit in all these ports. I can actually use the board to its full potential. So that is where it's at there. We actually are 5U. This takes up 5U above this. So we're using 6U spaces alone just with our Yamaha MG012 mixer. And actually, it kind of locks in too when you push it all the way in. So it can't come out unless you give it a nice tug, which is pretty cool. And if you saw there, I went ahead and I Velcroed this on here. So it is not going anywhere. And um, yeah, so now I'm going to go ahead and move on to uh, putting a lot of this, a lot of this into here. All right, so that was the quick, easy, and fun part of this whole entire endeavor, just screwing all these up. And yes, I did only put one screw in all of these for now. That's just in case I wanna move some stuff. I wanna move this down below this or this down below that. But I only put one in. I will put two in here at the end. Also, side note, you don't have to buy any of these screws. When you when you buy this road case, they come with a, a ton of them. There's there's actually a whole nother package of them over there. So they come with enough screws to put all this stuff in, as well as when you buy like the shelves, they come with them too. So the main part for me now Honestly, I'm going to literally just go through this thing and try and figure out how I'm going to wire it with all the cables that I got. And then I'll actually transition over to making those uh, plates, these cutout plates right here. Um, figuring out what all is going to get mounted in these. So right now it's kind of just the conceptualized part. I knew this is kind of like what all I wanted in there. Now I got to kind of figure out how to wire it. So I'm going to work on that and I will touch base with you guys periodically. you might be wondering why I put uh, painter's tape over all these ports. Well, remember when I said that I don't have everything I need for this project and I couldn't get to the hardware store because of the whole virus thing? The screws and nuts to bolt this in, I, I, I don't have any. So I'm using tape to hold them in place until I get them mounted and then I'll take the tape off. And then uh, eventually when I get to the hardware store, I can get the screws that hold these into place so that it's permanently mounted there. Now, obviously you can't see what ports they are underneath this tape. You'll see them later, but we 
we have six male XLR ports. These are all going to the drive rack. So have all three of our independent outputs for the drive rack. Then we have a series of two inputs. So we have a left and right input here and a left and right input here, or just an individual input for each. These are gonna be basically, two of these are gonna be our left and right pair coming from our boo for our main stereo audio source. And then there will be another two here that could be either mic or line. Uh, same with these, they could be either mic or line. So we have basically four inputs here or two left and right pairs. And then we have a power con that powers the whole entire rack. Now down here, I haven't really done much wiring. I've already kind of ran my antenna to where they're gonna be. They're gonna be a port plate up here that I showed you guys it's over there. And then we're gonna put either of our antennas on either side up here on that port plate and that'll be good to go. I went ahead and wired the microphone, ran XLR up there. I need to get two more XLRs for the stereo output that comes from the uh, board itself so that stereo pair there is going to be linked to down there again I got some wiring to do I got to hook up the DMX portion with the donor wireless DMX I got to start putting all the power together back to more time lapses of me wiring this madness All right, wiring, wiring, wiring. As you can see, I got the router mounted up top here. I'm still not done with wiring. I still gotta mount up the DMX uh, transmitter. Uh, I got a lot more still to do, but this is where we're at right now, and it's looking pretty damn good, to be honest. All right, so I think you guys can see where I'm going with this, hopefully, but we are fully wired up. Now, one thing I do wanna point out, remember, I couldn't get everything I needed for this uh, because of the whole issue right now. Um, you see all this extra cable right here? Well, these NLFX ones, um, I knew this going into it, are about six inches short to get up to here. So right now I'm using some spare XLR cable that I have, but I need to buy some six inch jumpers. Make that a lot simpler. Just buy like, uh, I think I need four six inch jumpers. So that way I can actually run the NLFX cable and I don't have a lot of extra cable. But because you see all this wire down here, it looks kind of messy, but we're gonna be mounting that shelf right above this so it's gonna go one U above all of these wires and that right there is gonna be kind of like the storage area so I'm gonna get some tubs basically that can fit in here or just maybe no tubs at all but I'm gonna put a bunch of cables in here maybe a shelf I'm not really sure what all we're gonna do here but this is kind of like storage area down here for extra cables and stuff that we might need for events so that way we basically roll this in and it has all the cables and everything that we possibly need inside of it already ready to go so now I'm gonna tackle two things one I gotta make I gotta cut out some holes for these antennas uh, in that plate that's laying over there and then two I'm gonna mount up the shelf so those are the next two things I'm gonna be tackling and I also gotta button up the DMX portion and then it should be done Other than getting some screws for these down here um, we are done I went ahead and took the tape off so you guys can kind of see what we're looking at um, yeah as you can see I need to screw those in but those are the six outputs of the drive rack itself it goes in order from low mid to high and then these are our inputs this is one and two this is four and five number three is actually our wireless microphone and I do plan on uh, labeling everything. This is all gonna be labeled eventually. We got a nice row above here that I can print out some labels and label all this with power and all that. And then here on the front of the actual board when you pull it out, um, I'm gonna get some white gaff tape and put it down here and uh, take a Sharpie and write out what all these inputs are so that they match the inputs on the back. Actually, I'm probably going to um, just go ahead and print out labels uh, that said so the labels on the back match the labels here So this will be my left my right. So this will be one two This is the wireless mic down below and then we have four and five hooked up And then obviously we got all the outputs and all that goody 
this in here as well. I still need to get some uh, four six inch jumper cables to run over here so that way we don't have all that slack underneath of shelf down here. Which speaking of which, as you can see, I made it protrude out as far as I can. Don't worry, we have plenty of depth in the lid to work with. The main goal behind that was so that on the back, this is flush with the actual ports below. So I didn't want I didn't want a, this to protrude out, so I wanted it flush with the port, so that's what we did. And as you can kind of see here, I flipped the shelf actually upside down compared to what it's supposed to be. So that way I can buy some plastic bins, hopefully that are just about this right size, and I could slide them in here. And the goal is to kind of slide a bin in here. Hopefully I can find one just this big so that we can put all the cables in it. Hopefully I can find one exactly this size or maybe two this size so that we can put all the cables for the event right inside of the rack itself. That would be dope. Well, that is what we're going to be doing. So with everything complete, let me power it up because we that's the one thing we haven't done yet is actually powered it up. And then I'll walk you through everything, including our mic antenna receivers, USB cable for the Chave Show Express, all of this goodness. So I have my PowerCon cable here. This is only a 10 foot PowerCon. I do plan on buying an extremely long, uh, probably eh, 25, 50 foot long extension cord to be able to use with this at all times. I'm thinking 50 foot, that way we have plenty of slack and distance to get power from anywhere and get it to the rack. Also, on that note, there's one last thing that I wanna put into this rack that uh, I, don't, I don't have here yet. And that is a full on power strip on the front of this thing. As you can see with the Furman there, I have two more slots left on the Furman. And my plan is to buy a rack mounted power strip and run one of those outlets down to either bringing the shelf up maybe one and putting it on the very bottom below all these or leaving the shelf where it's at and mounting it down here. So I'm gonna buy a rack mounted power strip that basically puts a bunch of outlet ports uh, on the front face of a 1U rack mount. So it's basically the Furman, um, but just flip it so that all the outlets are right here. So that'll be dope. Uh, and I'm gonna put it either down here or again, I'm gonna move the shelf up by one and put it on the back. But enough talking, let's power it up. So I just plugged this in and one little thing I wanted to point out. If you notice when I was assembling the uh, plate down here, I had to basically unscrew the plug so that I could fit it through the hole. So I had to undo the whole entire plug, this plug right here, so that I could get it through the hole. I need to make sure that I wired this correctly uh, before I go blowing all these electronics if it's wired incorrectly. So what you need is one of these. It's a little tester. I'll link them down in the description down below. They're really cheap. Um, but this is my tester. Put my name on it. Um, and it will tell you based on the lights if you wired it correctly. So basically you just take your tester and you plug it into here and if you guys can see we have the both of the amber lights are lit up not the red one and as you can see there at the bottom that means it is wired correctly. Uh, this is actually something you should always carry in all of your toolboxes just a little bonus tip here always have one of these handy. I always plug into every outlet before I plug in at a venue I plug this into the outlet to make sure they have it wired correctly. Because you never know, they might have the neutral and the ground mixed, and this thing will tell you if it is wired correctly, which is a great tool. All right, power on time. We are on, and we have 124 volts. Nice, nice. We have power on our Chave Show Express. We do not have power on our DBX drive rack, though. Does Audio Technica have power? Audio Technica has power. So curious, our, our drive rack does not have power. The IEC plugged into this was loose on the back, so I'm gonna look into that here in a second. And what do you know? The, the IEC is hanging down here, so that is something that I'm gonna to have to look into as to how to keep this plugged in. I plugged it back in, I'm gonna to have to look into um, how to make that more permanent, uh, maybe with some zip ties or some tape or something. I'll look into it. But Coming back around to the front, there we go. We have our drive rack on. Everything is set up, ready to go. Nice, nice, nice. Um, let's go ahead and pull the audio board out. And the switch is right on the back here. And we have power on the audio board as well. And right there we can kind of see back that the uh, Netgear router is also operational and working. The The last thing really to check is to make sure the wires to the MX works. Make sure our Netgear router is hooked up properly to our drive rack. And um, check to make sure all the audio cabling is good. And uh, that's it. Alright guys, so I'm going to end the video here. 
by going through everything one more time to explain to you everything that's in here and how it all works. And I will probably update you with the changes that I make uh, going down the road with a uh, different stuff that that power strip I was talking about but this right now is pretty much everything and it is sick and it is exactly what I wanted so to start off the main piece of this whole entire thing is our Yamaha 12 channel mixer here and it's on this pull out tray so you just pull on this tray it comes all the way out so you have full access to everything on the mixer and also when you push it back it actually will lock in. There you go. It kind of locks in the place so it doesn't go sliding all over the place when it's in transport. So moving through our inputs into the board, we have input one and two, either mic or line. We have number three, which is our wireless microphone down below that I'll show you, the Audio Technica. And then also on the back, we have number four and number five. Number four is either a mic or line and number five is really just an additional one. I could move these around if I need to. Channel seven and eight has phantom power if I need it. So these inputs can move around a little bit, but for the most part, this is where they're at. Then the left and right output from the Yamaha MG12 goes down the rack to the DBX drive rack PA2. You guys know it, I love this thing. It's my favorite uh, sort of audio processing tool that I have. Um, we have all kinds of functionality. I need to make some videos on this, but basically you can do everything from a graphic EQ, anti-feedback suppression, limiters, compressors, parametric EQ, delays, you name it. There's even an RTA mic to listen to the room. This thing is very, very powerful, and it's got three separate outputs. They label them low, mid, and high, but really inside the drive rack, you can make these individual outputs so I can control my PRX 712s and then my SRX 715s and then even I could put my Maui 5 goes on somewhere else so I have independent control of three different outputs to put into three different areas to hear the audio. Then down below that we have one Audio Technica 3000 4th gen wireless microphone receiver. We do have one more slot so if I ever feel like spending another $700 and buying another one I can do it and I can mount it right there and hook it right into the board and have two wireless mics in here. But I don't have that kind of money right now, so we only got one. Now, not to skip over it, uh, we do have the Furman power strip here that supplies all the power to everything in this whole entire rack. There's also a port here on the front, so if someone is back here running the audio and they want to plug in their phone, plug in their laptop, they can easily do it right here on the front. Also, we have these pull-out lights so that at night, if you can't see, obviously, um, let me shut off my light. So there you go, at night you can pull out both of these lights right here and that way you can see all of the gear below and uh, see all the switches and all that fun stuff. And then right below that I have a Chave Show Express box right here. This is the Chave Show Express Plus rack mountable. Um, I believe I should be able to actually program these buttons and that's something I need to look into. I haven't really messed with it, but for the most part we're gonna be using it with a computer it's just very handy that it's already mounted into this rack so that if we show up for an event, we can hook up our audio into here and then we can just quickly hook up our DMX. Uh, we don't have to fiddle around with setting it up. Then below it, we have our shelf and this is just basically storage. So I'm gonna get some bins, we're gonna store cables, you name it, we can store it down here and bring it to an event. Extra storage space, always welcome. Now, if I undo my locking wheels here, we can turn this around. So continuing on with the Chave Show Express DMX real quick, I already have a Chave, or a, a donor wireless DMX transmitter hooked up into the Chave Show Express so we don't have to fiddle around with DMX cables. Uh, we're already set up to run wireless DMX. We just gotta take the receivers and plug them into the lights that we're gonna be using. And additionally with the Chave Show Express DMX, the USB cable actually runs up and I used my, my mistake. I mean, I, I meant to do this on purpose. This totally wasn't a mistake and I totally didn't cut the wrong size hole that was supposed to be for that hole. No, this was done on purpose, 100%, to be able to run the USB cable and I put a little wire tie on it so that it keeps it nice and tidy there. Um, if you're running DMX, you just put your laptop up top and run your DMX. Right beside it, we have both of our antennas, so we just kind of pivot these up at the events. This is for the wireless microphone, the Audio Technica that we're running. So both of our antennas have been routed from the wireless microphone there with some extenders and mounted up here 
for better transmission. And then lastly, in the center here, we have our Netgear wireless router. Again, just flip the antenna out real quick. The Netgear wireless router is what allows us to communicate with the drive rack PA2. So with my iPad or with my phone, I can open up the drive rack app if I'm connected to this router and I can basically do all of the functionality of the drive rack wirelessly anywhere in the room and basically EQ, do all the stuff with the speakers that I need to do. Then lastly, coming all the way down, we have our patch port panel. So starting on the left here, we have all six of our outputs from the drive rack PA2. These right here are our lows, these are our mids, these are our highs, or as I like to say, output one, two, and three, because you can control all these outputs individually. Then beside it here, these are our inputs into the Yamaha MG12 mixer. We have number one, number two. I purposely left this one blank so that way it kind of mimics what I have on the board above because number three is actually hooked up to the wireless microphone, the Audio-Technica. And then number four and number five. And then lastly, we have our PowerCon power in that runs to our Furman power strip. And of course, I still need to go buy some screws and nuts to be able to mount all of these permanently in here, as well as I need to make some labels for all these ports. So I need to put my labels up here so that all of these are labeled so that both I myself know what they are and anybody that is assisting me or helping me at my events knows what they are as well. And that is it. All right guys, that wraps up this project for the day. Again, I probably will be making some update videos on some other stuff that I add to this. Also, I've seen online a hack to be able to use the lids as like a table on the side. So I'm gonna be looking into that. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna be thinking about possibly doing that. But anyways, that's all for this video guys. It was a lot of time lapses and stuff like that, but I am so excited. This stuff, building stuff like this, like, cause I have it in my head and just like actually having it in person finally, I'm super excited to get this out to an event. Please let this virus end so that I can actually get back to gigging and using the gear that I love. But anyways, if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Again, I'm gonna link everything that I used in this build, including all those cables and everything. I'm gonna make a full list in the description as well as the first comment. And um, like always guys, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep the record spinning. I will see you guys next time. Peace.